Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 14th annual Health Right 360 Be the Change Practice. My name is Ahmad Thomas. I'm the CEO of the Silicon Valley Leadership Group and also a very proud board member here at Health Right 360. A shout out to the Health Right 360 leaders and Health Right 360 board of director members who are here today. I want to thank you all, first and foremost, for joining us at our first in-person event in two years. It is also our first ever hybrid event, and I want to extend a welcome to all of you who have joined our live stream. You're missing out on some good food and good burritos for some of us, uh, but you're, you're here and part of this, and I'm, I'm glad that you could, you could join. We really appreciate the support. Uh, this morning, you will meet and hear from individuals whose life, life stories of hope, recovery, and resilience will move and truly inspire you. Before we begin, I also want to make a special acknowledgement to all of the healthcare workers in the room, all of the workers at HealthRight360 who have given so much through this pandemic to keep us safe. And one of those esteemed healthcare leaders, Dr. Dr. Anna Valdez, who's the chief healthcare officer and our COVID safety protocol director, has asked me to remind each of you to please wear your mask at all times, especially when speaking to your neighbors. Everyone here this morning has shown their vaccination card and IDs prior to admission and the room is well ventilated with hospital grade HEPA filters. But please keep your mask on over your nose and mouth as much as possible. Don't worry about going hungry if you choose not to eat at the table. We will be giving each of you a warm breakfast burrito. See, some of you heard burritos and didn't know where this was going. We will give you a warm breakfast burrito on your way out to enjoy at your leisure. <laughs> In keeping with her role this morning, you will see a glove Dr. Anna up at the podium in between speakers, wiping down the podium in the microphone. So don't be alarmed, we're just ensuring we're following all safety protocols. Thank you, Dr. Anna, for all that you've done to keep our community and everyone here safe throughout this pandemic and for the event today. The last 22 months have been times like none other, and we at HealthRight 360 have seen a historic rise in the number of people coming through our doors for care and treatment. Clients arrive seeking admission to residential treatment, outpatient mental health services, substance use disorder treatment, housing assistance, primary medical care, and dentistry. Beginning last December and continuing today with booster shots, we have provided over 15,000 COVID-19 vaccinations to our clients, frontline workers, and the community. We saw and we continue to see a dramatic increase in the number of people requiring treatment for chronic medical issues, depression, suicidal anxieties, phobia, sleep deprivation, aggression, and an increase in opioid, uh, opioid methamphetamine, and alcohol use disorders. Put simply, the work that Health Right 360 does for our community is needed now more than ever before. This morning, we have a number of dignitaries that we are honored to have as our guests. I'm gonna go through this long list. Let's not jump in with any applause until we get to the end. Uh, but please, when I've gone through the list, let's give a hearty welcome round of applause to these leaders. Senator Scott Weiner, Supervisor Chan, Supervisor Haney, Supervisor McMillan. These are all San Francisco supervisors. I hope that's, that's well known. <laughs> uh, our police chief, Scott. 
uh, District Attorney Modi, San Francisco Public Defender Raju, Assessor Recorder Torres, Health Commission President Commissioner Bernal, Director of the Office of Economic and Workforce Development, Kate Sophus, Director of San Francisco Public Health, Behavioral Health, Dr. Kunitz, San Francisco Superior Court Judges, Lorne, Hyde, uh, and Chayton, who's retired. Uh, Supervisor Mandelman is here. And lastly, a very special welcome to the Ashbury Free Clinic's founder, Dr. David Smith. And we are honored to have the mayor of San Francisco as part of the event this morning. The mayor is a great friend to Health Right 360 uh, and is San Francisco's 45th mayor. Since February 2020, Mayor Leonard Breed has led the city's response to COVID-19 with a focus on slowing the spread of the virus and protecting the health of our most vulnerable citizens. Her early and decisive actions have been credited with controlling the spread of COVID-19 in San Francisco, preventing the healthcare system from becoming overwhelmed and ultimately saving many, many lives. The mayor I know is en route, so I'll save the, the formal uh, welcome to her on stage. But we wanted to make sure to provide this acknowledgement and huge thank you to the mayor for her support. We're so glad that she can join us here today. I would like to next introduce our next speaker, Bonnie Preston. We're very fortunate to have her, and I know she's a surprise VIP addition to the program. Bonnie is the Acting Regional Director of Health and Human Services, representing President Biden's Secretary of HHS, Javier Becerra, in California, Nevada, Arizona, Hawaii, and the U.S. affiliated islands of the Pacific. She, wait, am I skipping ahead here? I'm good? Okay, all right. <laughs> I see Vicka looking at me. I never know if that's good or bad. <laughs> okay, no expression under the mask and the empty eyes. I didn't know where I was. All right, we're, we're good, Bonnie. We're going to keep this going. So, Bonnie has over 25 years of experience in public health and healthcare at the local, state, and federal levels. She joined her office in 2012 to help implement the Affordable Care Act. She's worked closely with government and private sector partners to achieve more equitable, higher quality, coordinated health care, and public health services. Please welcome Director Bonnie Preston. Um, it's my job to find ways for federal health, and human, federal health and Human Services programs to work better for the people across Region 9, which Ahmed just told you all of the area that we cover. But what we found in COVID is um, really honing those priority uh, techniques <laughs> to really try to find those hot spots and zero in on them. So, even though it's a huge area, we hope that um, when the needs become so obvious, we finally go there and, and, and get, those, get that support there, but eventually make it out to the whole region. So I'm here to celebrate change, good change, necessary change. We're surrounded by cha change makers, the staff and supporters of Health Right 360, led by Vidka Eisen. And our trailblazing supervisors, our DA, police chief, Dan Bernal, San Francisco Health Commission, uh, Scott Wiener, and of course, our amazing mayor and my former supervisor, London Breed. We're here to honor Health Right 360 and its network of organizations 
that have been providing culturally appropriate care in the community, expanding access to compassionate care, and really setting the standard, showing the way as we all continue to work toward that ideal, that goal of health care for all, the right to health care. I'm here as Secretary Becerra's representative to tell you that the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services wants to continue to partner with you on this journey, but to partner more fully as we up our commitment to solving the overdose and substance use disorder crises, the housing crisis, and our mental health challenges. Today is a big day for change because just hours ago, Secretary Becerra announced the first ever federally funded harm reduction grant program. The grants will help increase access to community harm reduction services and support harm reduction providers like Health Right 360. He announced the availability of a new model law to help states ensure access to safe, effective, and cost-saving harm reduction services. So Scott will work on that. Um, his actions. <laughs> of the new federal overdose prevention strategy, which is guided by the principles of equity, data and evidence, coordination, collaboration, and integration, and reducing stigma. The strategy has four areas. Prevention, focusing on root causes and key predictors of substance use and substance abuse disorder, and how to safely and effectively manage pain. Harm reduction. Reducing risks associated with substance abuse, including overdose and infectious disease transmission. Evidence-based treatment, supporting the provision of the most effective evidence-based treatments without delay, stigma, or other barriers. And finally, recovery, something that we have not had a lot of federal support for. Improving the quality of coordinated recovery support services. This will require developing and funding a more comprehensive recovery infrastructure, as well as developing protocols around peer employment and housing supports. There will be new funds to support this strategy as the President's fiscal year 22 proposed budget on overdose prevention programs and initiatives totals $11.2 billion. This is a 54% increase from fiscal year 21. Successful implementation of this strategy depends on federal, state, and local partners working hand in hand with healthcare professionals, law enforcement, policymakers, employers, advocacy groups, and the community at large. We look to you and your expertise and leadership. We want to study your successes and expand them throughout California, Region 9, and the nation. We want to support you more so you can expand and relieve the tremendous need in the communities you serve. I know if Secretary Becerra were here, he would say to us, do more, <laughs> and would join us all in a chorus of Be The Change. So thank you all. Hospitalizations are low, and even with Omicron, Omicron, 
<laughs> Could there be a more ominous sounding name for a variant of concern? <laughs> I mean, really, would we be so worried if it was pie? <laughs> Who doesn't like pie? <laughs> but no, Omicron. Omicron invades you from outer space and absorbs you into its hive mind. <laughs> And even with the new variant, we learned how to manage COVID-19 in San Francisco and in California. We have ample vaccines and boosters. We carry our vaccine cards and we're used to wearing masks. In fact, I've become pretty reliant on my mask for photo taking. I was refusing to take it down. Not for health reasons. I no longer have to worry about the quality of my smile for the camera. <laughs> so we're in a good place and we should be proud of the effort and discipline that it took to get here. But it's still a little funny, right? I mean, okay, I have to say, you are the largest group of people that I've talked to in person for two years. So how am I doing? <laughs> I have pants and shoes on. This is great. <laughs> doing all right so far. But we do have a lot to catch up on. Despite the challenge of a novel, all too often deadly virus, Health Right 360 has continued to provide uninterrupted mental health and addiction treatment, primary medical care, emergency dental, and traditional housing. Through every twist and turn of the rapidly unfolding crisis, Health Right 360 rose to the challenge to meet the needs of San Francisco's most vulnerable residents, just as we have done for the past 50 years. When the city moved people indoors, uh, moved people without housing indoors during the shelter in place order, March of 2020. Health Rate 360's primary care teams deployed to the shelter and place hotels <clears throat> to tend to the health care needs of the residents. And as the city master leased motels to provide a safe place for individuals without housing or those in dense congregate living situations who tested positive for Health Rate for uh, COVID, Health Rate 360 partnered with the public health department to safely support and care for those individuals until they were cleared of COVID. When vaccines became available, we became a vaccine site, vaccinating nearly 7,000 individuals, now including booster shots. While responding to the overwhelming crisis, we nevertheless continue to engage in other work to address the needs of San Franciscans who struggle with mental illness and addiction. We're a part of the San Francisco Street Crisis Team, or as we like to call it, skirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that, you say. Uh, this innovative, nationally recognized program operates 24-7 all over the city to respond to 911 calls regarding a person on the streets in mental health crisis. What is so very unique about this program is that it is a true alternative to unnecessary police contacts, thereby reducing the likelihood of injury to the individual and to the police. It allows police resources to be used elsewhere. It is designed to help connect individuals to care and the services they need the most. Now behind that headline, grabbing COVID-19 pandemic, moved another silent and deadly crisis. 2020 turned out to be the deadliest year ever for drug overdose in the U.S., with more than 100,000 lives tragically lost. In San Francisco alone, there were 500 overdose deaths from last January through September. As part of the city's response to the overdose emergency, in addition to the team, and in partnership with the health department, We'll soon be opening the Soma Rise, a place where people on the streets in drug-related crisis can walk in or be transported by the skirt team and be welcomed with some food, a safe place to be, to get some sleep, get a shower, and most importantly, build those crucial, necessary relationships that help people take steps towards improving their health and well-being. And as our mayor moves forward with plans to stem the tide of drug deaths in San Francisco, we will be there for overdose prevention programs as well. These are places where people can be supervised while they consume their pre taken drugs. We will be there to make sure that they do not die of an overdose. And we will work to build connections to care and hope and safety. as a garden, the projects we're doing. It's a garden. Each project standing alone, each program is like a plant. 
It has its own intrinsic value. They're grown together, all those programs grown together. They nurture the soil, feed bees, bear fruit, and reseed the soil again. Together, they are beautiful and nourishing. Where the need is greatest from 1967 forward, we have always been there and we always will be. Now, despite all the challenges of the past year, there are really only two things that keep me up at night. I am not worried that we will be unable to meet the challenges of a mutating virus. And I am not worried that we have a lack of creativity, innovation, and pure grit to overcome the challenges posed by fentanyl and meth and a lack of housing, and even the far more complex issues of income inequality and systemic racism. No, the two things that keep me up at night are, one, the emotional toll of the past 20 months on our staff, and two, I worry about compassion fatigue. HealthRite 360 staff have always been heroes. They bring love, light, and necessary services to the darkest places. Prisons, jails, encampments, anywhere and everywhere that people need care. With the strain of COVID-19 from the early days with makeshift PPE, through outbreaks, through staffing shortages with the schools shut down, it has become increasingly difficult to fill positions. Remember that though our staff are vaccinated, we still work with some of the few remaining populations of unvaccinated people, that is, people experiencing homelessness. Our amazing staff are simply worn to the bone. So whatever support you offer today will go towards taking care of our staff. If we can't take care of our staff, then we can't take care of our clients, and we can't take care of our community. The second thing I worry about is compassion fatigue. The past 20 months have been so very terribly difficult for everyone. Fears about COVID-19, economic insecurity, isolation, partisan rancor, and an actual coup attempt in the U.S. Capitol. I worry that people have become inured to other people's suffering. I worry that people have become or are becoming jaded and cynical about the possibility of change. And yet, and yet, through all of that, you're here today. You showed up. You're wearing your masks. Good job. You've all been vaccinated. You got up at dark 30 in the morning to be here. And you're here to hear about the lives of our clients to support our work. If you're streaming the event, we added, those of you streaming, one more extra Zoom meeting to your already busy day. <laughs> Through all of those challenges, you're here. Here you are. So thank you for that. I was working on, you know, a lot of things, but they cut it off. They cut off the, the jobs due to the pandemic. So I kind of started like overwhelming myself. I, I started using more. I started uh, hanging out with the wrong people. Um, when I was driving, I was insane. And unfortunately, I got into a car accident. 
And then from there, you know, I was really going to struggle, really struggle, like in bed. Thank God that nothing happened to me, like break bones or nothing like that. But uh, mentally, I was exhausted and very, very emotional. But my friend uh, bring that up, you know, about these programs. And I thought, if I, if I don't do this, what am I going to do later? The 214 staff compliance, they adjusted and adapted to the shelter in place. The 214 is residential step down. This is the pilot program in San Francisco to help these guys. And that's my goal is to help them come through here, get housing, but most of all, get a, a recovery base. The pandemic significantly impacted uh, the dental clinic. We, all, all across the nation, dental clinics were shut down because uh, for safety concerns. Um, of something a little bit uh, maybe not well known is that dentistry generates aerosols and once we found out the virus was airborne and the respiratory disease We had to shut down the clinic for safety of the public the staff the clients And we when we did shut down we had to remain open for urgent care services though We had to prevent um, all the patients We had to keep the patients from going to the already full emergency rooms so we're trying to like take care of um, just dental concerns and that was really hard for us because we, our, our staff were, you know, everyone in the world was a little bit scared about what was going on at that time. So um, under the leadership of Dr. Anna Valdez, we um, safely closed the clinic and reopened um, very, very carefully. I was growing the lab in my own audition. It was a whole other thing. And I made a long time for about six months. And then I went to it's already up down, and I stayed in there because the pandemic started, and so it was really a struggle because we couldn't go nowhere, we couldn't do this anywhere. But we had some very good, I mean, some very good staff. They helped us, they helped us, they made us feel like we were welcome, and then we wasn't around with family until they made us feel like we had a family there, and it was a good thing. And I was like, like, like my outpatient didn't get two and a half, two and a half years. And you know how important for people, you know, I never trust the trust of people. And it's amazing, because I can see when they care of society, they look at you as, like, as an adult. So you never look beyond that with people. You don't look beyond that. I don't have to care with people. And I can see you said, I'm no good because I start off with it. But anyway, I had a good year. And she was so wonderful in my life. She was like my big sister too. She supported me through college, everything helped me get it. The grand helped me, told me to go get the um, um sign up on um, the thing in the car. I didn't know how to go get it. I knew how to get the college trying and I didn't know how that was my journey, and I did. You know what I mean? I was six, four years old and went to college and I was so happy. I was, I was like 80 and then you said, what do you want to do when you grow up? <laughs> 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 you know the body you stand. <laughs> I had a good experience among them. They were the best boys to do this October 1st of 2020, I went to 1563 and I asked to get a bed and they literally took me in that day. And I started going to groups and the staff there were exactly the people I needed around me. We did movement class and, you know, it was really hard because of the pandemic, but that was the opportunity for me to like be still for once. Also, the other best thing is like, when I just moved, you guys, or health rep gave me a new bed. I got to go to a warehouse and like pick out new comforters, new pillows, and a brand new bed that was donated. So I'm like super excited and super grateful because I, I just bought a truck. I'm working full time, the apprenticeship for gardening with the city of San Francisco. It's like I'm going to school as a part of that. And I'm dancing every day and I'm singing and I'm like, I love my life and I'm so grateful to be clean. The population now that we serve, the drugs that they're putting out there on the streets, the fentanyl, it's really, um, it's really messing these guys' heads up. You know, they come here, voices, you know, and all kinds of way out stuff. And, you know, 
we deal with them, we get them into therapy, we work with them one on one, you know, I'll put them in their own home room if they need to, you know. My message is, um, you know, you don't have to live like that anymore. You know, there is help. I'm just so proud of myself, to be honest with you. It's, 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 it's been so many things that caught me up that I was like, what I've been doing on the side, I know I'm 23 years old, but it's been, it's been hell <laughs> being all this past three years before I got here. So I'm even seeing this now, being sober is so beautiful. I can get, I'm able to see life in different angles. I'm able to see, you know, I don't know, it's, it's just so many, I enjoy it, I don't care, I, I, I don't know. It, I, I enjoy the moment more, more than anything else like that's how I used to do. And that's what makes me happy, to become a better person. And uh, if it wasn't because Mr. Les and Andrew Ramirez and everybody else at the stop in A90 that uh, support me, honestly, I, I don't think I would be able to make it through this. And they were there for me. And I'm very happy about that. And I was just like, yeah, thank you. Susie, Sharon, and Jose are here with us this morning, and I would like to ask them to stand. I found recovery by chance. 
My girlfriend, who I was homeless with, decided to get clean. And with great reluctance, I also decided to try as well. Sadly, that relationship did not last past detox, but I am still sober today. <laughs> All jokes aside, this was a moment of great uncertainty. I was 22 years old. My future was balanced on the knife's edge with no discernible path before me. And then a friend referred me to Walton House, a program of Health Right 360. Walton House offered me sanctuary, a safe place for healing, wraparound supportive services, and the tools to form healthy relationships with staff and my peers many of which last to this day. But more than the groups, the therapy sessions, the meetings with my counselor, Walton House was the central nervous system through which I was able to access the services I needed to stabilize and thrive. Housing, job training, primary health care, education, and most of all, a community. I graduated from the program in July of 2016, and my life has skyrocketed ever since. I have worked for Mayor Breed on a re-election campaign in 2016, helped the city secure a $2.9 million grant to house youth experiencing homelessness, served as a city commissioner, and have consulted for the federal government on improving behavioral health services for youth and young adults. Today, I've been clean and sober for over five years. I work full time for Ground Floor Public Affairs, where I primarily support the work of organizations whose missions directly align with Health Right 360s, resolving homelessness, supporting health care, and creating pathways to recovery for some of the most vulnerable and marginalized members of our society. I own a beautiful home where I'm raising two wonderful canine children. <laughs> and just weeks ago, I married an incredible woman whom I'm madly in love with and in perpetually in awe of. <laughs> None of this would have been possible without Health Right 360. But when I think about Health Right and the impact they've had on my life, I cannot help but be reminded that their work extends far beyond services rendered to just me. In the summer of 2019, when my father, whom I've been reconnected with as an adult, reached out to me for support with his own issues with substance use, I knew exactly where to turn. He did the work, showing up at 1563 Mission Street at Health Right 360's Integrated Care Center for his appointments to get into treatment, staying in touch with his case manager, and following through on his commitment to recovery by entering into the same program that had saved my life just three years earlier. I'm happy to say that last September, after graduating from Walton House, in the midst of a pandemic, no less, my father celebrated two years of recovery. <laughs> I could not be prouder. I have a lot to be thankful for, but I would be remiss if I did not take this time to single out my incredible step-mom, Jenna, who is here with us today. You have always believed in me, even when I was not capable of believing in myself. I love you. Love you. <laughs> As I close, I ask each of you to remember that despite our perceived distance, a feeling ever too present in today's world of Zoom screens and conference calls, that we are all more interconnected than we can ever imagine, and that your kindness, generosity, and largesse today will pave the way for future generations to come. It has been many years since I last stepped foot in Walton House, but I know now, as I ever have, that for me, it will always be home. Thank you.
Let's hear for Zach one more time, everybody. Uh, good morning, friends. It really is lovely uh, to be with everyone in person. The fact that we're gathering in person, as Victor mentioned, many of us have not been out of the house in the last couple of years. This is one of the first times I've had pants on, probably, uh, in front of an audience. So uh, it's good to be gathered together again. Uh, my name is Liam Leeson, uh, and I'm so happy that we're all gathered together here today. Um, I'm going to do the fun and eat for our breakfast this morning. Uh, in just a moment, because as we know, uh, all these important services offered by Health Right 360 would not be possible without the generosity of friends and supporters like everyone here this morning. Um, I've been involved with Health Right 360 uh, for uh, about 12 years, and I want to give a little shout out to Ben and Diane Fong Torres, who are watching at home with many other people in our virtual. So let's give it up for everyone who's watching at home with us today. So joyfully, uh, as you've just heard, over the years and this morning, you've heard firsthand the stories of redemption. You've heard of the results of the Health360 programs. And so many people always question, you know, what's happening in San Francisco? Uh, what's been done? Well, the great work uh, has been done by this community, uh, by Health360. And I just want to mention that I stand here this morning uh, in honor of uh, my mother, uh, Maury, who needed the services uh, that Health Right 360 provides, but she didn't get to them in time. And we lost her too young, too soon, at the age of 56, 23 years ago. So, Mom, this one's for you, and is every time I show up here. Today we heard from Zach, we heard from Courtney, we heard from Susie, Sharon, and Jose. Let's hear for them one more time for sharing that. And their lives, as we know, have been most possibly transformed uh, because Health Right 360 uh, was there and has been there for them when they needed help. It's a continuing privilege uh, for me, of course, to support Vicar and the dedicated team here who are steadfast uh, in their commitment, even in the midst of a pandemic. 365 days a year, they're committed to ensuring that they bring good health hope to the clients they serve. So, uh, friends, together, let's help get people the care they need. Uh, let's get them into treatment. Uh, stably housed, just a place they can call home, into jobs, having a purpose, a place to go to work. Um, and as you know, Health Right 360 has provided health care to, this is a big number, to 49,000, let's hear it for that number, individuals across the state of California. Uh, more than 15,000 in San Francisco alone, uh, but there are thousands of people who still need Health Right 360. They need their help, they need the programs, they need the support. So, together, I hope you'll join me in showing that we can help people get better, do better, and be better. So, uh, I'm hoping you will be inspired uh, this morning uh, to raise your virtual paddle. But you know, I'm going to come to the paddle raise in just a moment because I'd like to invite the mayor up to have a little word first. Because, you know, I, I can't, well, I want to follow the mayor. I'm going to tee her up. Does she need an introduction? Let's hear it for the great mayor of our city. Mayor, I bring a whole new meaning to CP time, don't I? <laughs> I know I was supposed to be here earlier, and thank you all so much for your patience, but more importantly, thank you for being here to support Health Right 360. It is great to see so many of our elected leaders here today, and uh, I, I am just really so excited about the future of our city. And let me just start by saying that this organization is so near and dear to my heart, and uh, because you know, how important it is to me because of the lives that they have saved and changed, but also because of the lives that they will continue to save and change. We all know that the challenges that our city faces with people who suffer from mental illness and substance use disorder is something that just doesn't go away because we don't want to see it. 
See, a lot of folks complain about the conditions of our streets, but we know that those conditions involve people who sadly are suffering. And no, I don't want to see people out on our streets suffering. I want them to get the help and the treatment and the support that they need. Because we all know, because we support this organization, that what we do can turn someone's life around. And so I talk about my own personal experiences because I want people to understand why, why this is important. Not just because I'm a mayor of this amazing city, but because what I've seen throughout my entire life during the crack epidemic and what this city's response was, sadly, to lock people up who clearly needed treatment, who clearly needed support. I don't want to be that leader that focuses on locking people up when they need to be in a healthcare facility or someplace where they're going to get the help and treatment that they need. And that I know that Health Right 360 is right there with me, helping to push to open safe consumption sites. See, I finally said that. <laughs> like, call it safe consumption site. I'm like, we changed the name so many times. <laughs> Last night I was at an event, and I was at an event with a lot of people that support me, but some people who are very uncomfortable um, with the fact that we as a city are choosing to spend resources on a site that will allow people who struggle with addiction to use drugs. And my argument to support this has everything to do, again, with my experiences, because I'll be honest with you, when I was on the Board of Supervisors and this was first brought to my attention, I was very hesitant and very concerned. And then I had a chance to go to Vancouver to see it firsthand, but also I couldn't help but think about my own sister, who Walden House at the time uh, was there for her, Glide was there for her, different programs here in the city, because growing up here, you knew if you needed help, you knew that the two major institutions, or three major institutions were uh, Haight-Ashbury Free Clinic, Walden House, and Glide. We knew that if we went there, if we were in trouble, they would take care of us. And uh, my sister, who sadly struggled from addiction, uh, would call, this at this time, cell phones weren't as readily available, but call my grandmother's house, collect, um, ask for help, tell her she was in the tenderloin somewhere. we go down there looking for her at the spot that she said she was calling from. She wasn't there. And I thought to myself, how are we ever gonna get her into treatment? if she is calling us and we're not able to respond at a more rapid pace. And so when I think about what a safe consumption site will do, just imagine, and this is what happened in Vancouver, you walk through a door and most people, when they see someone coming with addiction, there's a frown on their face. But you have people who are there to help, so they are smiling. Not because they're happy about your struggles, but because they see you as a human being. And that, <laughs> and so they see you as a human being. And part of that is you walk through the door and every day you see that same friendly face. And one day you think, I'm ready to change. And guess where you're gonna go? You're gonna go to that person you see every day and say, help me. Help me turn my life around. And part of these safety consumption sites are important because the people of Health Right 60, 360, with not just the strong, sincere desire in their heart to help, but in many cases, people with lived experience who understand how to help. That's what's gonna make the difference when we open these sites finally in the city and county of San Francisco. I think we're gonna save more lives and people are gonna see the difference. Yes, we talk about the fact that we save money, but when you think about how many people overdosed in this city just this year, last year, over 700 people, more than we lost during a global pandemic, 
the need to think differently and to make the appropriate investments around supporting people like we never have before is so critical now more than ever. And so I appreciate just everything that Health Record 60 has done because it's not a one size fits all. It is a lot of different programs for a lot of different kinds of people with a lot of different needs and a lot of different issues. <laughs> and they have adapted to meet that need time and time again. When the city had to make changes around testing, around vaccinations, around sites for mental illness because people who were struggling on our streets, Health Right 360 was there for us. When we came up with this idea of the street crisis response team and the street overdose team and needed a clinician and help and support, they increased their capacity to support the work we do with our city folks. And so we're celebrating one year of the street crisis response team that has responded. <laughs> that has diverted over 5,000 calls away from the police and responded and engaged with over 2,000 people. Almost half of those people got help and support. That's people who wouldn't have gotten the assistance that they are getting to this very day had it not been for the work that we do with this organization. So we are turning things around in this city and no, it's not easy. But people have written our city off before. People talk bad about San Francisco and put these viral videos out. But there's a reason why people come here. Because we're a generous, compassionate city. Yes, I believe strongly in accountability and we will address those issues. But also, the need to think about people as human beings and meeting them where they are is so important to helping those folks turn their lives around. So, my sister lost her battle with drugs and, and died from a drug overdose, sadly. And when I think about what could have happened with her life and where she should have been at the age the day before she turned 26, I think about, man, what are most people doing at age 26? Partying, having a good time, living their best life. Hell, I became mayor. <laughs> and when I think about that, I think we can do better. We got some folks who are struggling with addiction that can be the next directors of Health Right 360, that can be the next mayors, that could be the next anything if we only make sure that we continue to invest the resources to turn their lives around. And what we are gonna do in this city over the next year after dealing with a global pandemic and being a model for the rest of the country to follow, we're gonna turn this city around. We are gonna create the narrative of how we address behavioral health, substance use disorder, crime and violence, and all of these things that are sadly impacting the quality of life. And those people whose lives we turn around are gonna be the next examples of what it means to be resilient and to be a strong, true San Franciscan who cares about doing it for the next generation. Thank you all so much for the opportunity. Thank you.